Good evening, everyone. As always, place a cross on first, no matter what's going on in your life. You know, hey, and this world we live in, man, just watch the news. There's a lot of evil stuff going on. But you know what? There's some good things going on, too. So don't lose hope. The world is not totally bad, and it's not totally good. I, I can't say it's perfectly balanced either, but there's some good things out there, people. Just try to overlook some of the evil. Try. Because if not, you're going to worry yourselves to death. Let us pray. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I was talking about pride and how when the Lord gives start favoring you, you know, growth gonna happen, increase gonna happen, so many things gonna happen in your life when but God's favor shining down on you. But you don't want to take that favor and abuse it. I believe a lot of people do it. Or they get they lose track of what it's all about or who it's all about or who it all came from. You understand? I've been there, people. I've I was one of the most prideful people I can think of myself. You know what I'm saying? I worship the work of my hand. I thought I couldn't be touched. Now before I I'm gonna give a little testimony right quick. Before I found God, man, I you know, it's beating your head. You got to keep moving up the chain. You got to keep moving up the chain. You got to keep moving up the chain. You got to keep moving up. You want to make money, you got to keep moving up. So when I got out the military, you know what I'm saying? Um, I got a job working somewhere and I just wanted to move up fast. I, I was making a nice little amount to start with, you know what I'm saying? But to me, I felt it wasn't enough. Every job that posts on the board, I signed up for it. I signed up for every job. And the thing is, I started getting it. And at the same time, I started getting prideful and boastful. And during this time period, I started turning my back on God. Slowly but surely. You know, I was a raid. I was an alcoholic. I had to drink all the time. But I had excess money. I had so much money. Extra money. My, my wife at the time was getting raises and promotions. I'm getting promotions. And on every job I sign up for, I'm touching. This is before I even started following after God. I was always raised in the church, but I never really knew what being a Christian was all about or following after most high was all about. And one thing about it, people, just like in the Bible stories I read to you this morning about Uzziah and Hama, uh, 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 his son, you know, they got up there and when they got to a certain level, they, they forgot how they got there. They forgot who put them there. They forgot who was guiding them. And this happens throughout the Bible so much. You know what I'm saying? But it happened to me. I'm glad the Lord came in and chastised me and broke me down. But I lost houses. I lost a house. Cars, vehicles, jobs. Man, it was like the humbling phase of my life as a Christian. You know, I had to learn how to appreciate and be content with things as I had over and i had to realize who my help came from but you know i didn't care like i had a i ain't saying i was all the way evil but i treated people horribly if they didn't work hard as me i treated you like trash treated you like you want nothing you know what i'm saying and i failed but i remember i had to go back to so many people and apologize after the lord came into my life and say i'm sorry for how i acted and how i behaved And you know, it took losing a job and all that to help me find the Lord. He said, woe to the rich. You know, he said, he will abase you. He will break you down. And, you know, a lot of people don't understand, but I love favor from the Lord. Everybody should. When the Lord favors you, man, he makes, just like the Bible said, even your enemies to be at peace with you. People who hate you are gonna listen to you and respect you you understand but at the same time you can't take advantage of it and you can't take advantage of it and fall away from god and start going back to the way you used to was right how you used to be you can't act like well i'm here now and i see it all the time you just look at a lot of people when they start up comedians actors different people in life they start off when they start off 
All glory be to God. All glory be to God. All glory be to God. And then when they start get further, this is how I get to where I am. And they start telling you how they got rich and how they got to where they were. They forget who put them there. And I'm scared of riches. Most people ain't. But the Bible says it's hard for the rich to inherit the kingdom of God. So that's one of my fears. Most people are like, how can you fear being wealthy? I do. You know what I'm saying? It's like, I want to have more, but I don't have so much that I forget about God. And I don't want to get a big head. And you don't want to get a big head. Because God is going to bless some of y'all with more finances than the norm, than the rest. But he wants you to use, utilize those finances and that, I ain't going to say power, but that favor that he gives you to assist and help others. You understand? I still got a little selfish in me. Don't get me wrong. I think a little selfishness keeps you a little balanced. You know what I'm saying? I'm not saying it's written in the word, but I'm saying a little bit. You know, you got to look out for numero uno. I believe in that. Like, think about your spiritual growth. You have to make sure you're right first. Just like the scripture says, you got to pull the plank and specks and splinters out of your whole body. Before you can learn how to pull them out of other people. So you got to do a lot of things in regards to making yourself right. Then you'll know how to help people better. You understand? All those things. But I'm telling you, Lord, I'm, I mean, people are uh, increase. It's good. It is. But many people have fell, fell short because of increase. You know, I watch stars who are rich. I watch Hollywood stories about certain people who gave their life over to God. And how they gave up so much to follow the truth. That lets you know right there that richness and spiritual blessings are way more beneficial than chasing after worldly riches. You know, little Richard, they don't talk about him that much. You know why? Because the last portions of his life, he turned his life over to God. But he was raised in the church. Now, before I even continue, now remember, it's a word that's used in the Bible all the time. Unbelief. I don't know why they say non-believers. But they say unbeliever. I'm going to tell you why. Every soul on this earth was born with a little bit of the spirit in them. To know who God is. So basically, when you start living for the world and you turn in your way, that's why... The Bible says, I, I'm going to read this from Revelations. Just dropped into my head. Um, I got a little time. I ain't in no hurry right now. And the Lord told me to do a video. So, you know, it's in the first part of Revelations. And a lot of people don't look at what this is kind of saying. But... First of all, I turn to this first. This is Revelations chapter 3, verse 15. I know thy works that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would that thou thou wert cold or hot. So then thou, because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Because thou sayest, I am rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing. And know it's not that thou art wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. Check that out. But let me find the one uh, when he's talking about going back to your first love. I'm almost done. Give me a little second, people. He goes, another one, chapter 2 of Revelations, verse 9. I know thou works in tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich. Wow. Ain't this amazing? That's it, chapter 2, right in my face. I know thy works and thy labor and thy patience and how thou canst not bear them which are evil and thou hast tried them which say they are apostles and are not and hast found them liars and hast borne 
and has patience, and for my name's sake has labored and has not frank, and nevertheless I have somewhat against thee, because thou hast left thy first love. Remember therefore from whence thou art fallen, and repent, and do the first voice, or else I will come unto thee quickly, and remove thy candlestick out of this place, except thou repent. First love. You know, when I first read that, I'm like, what? My first love? That was in middle school. <laughs> I'm thinking the Lord talking about a, a human being. You understand? I really did. I thought that's what he was talking about when he said your first love. You understand? And But he's talking about, I think about the Lord. So he said, before I formed you in the, in the womb, I knew you. Think about that. We're, we are in a constant process of falling away from God. Are growing towards him. But it's like every child, I ain't gonna say every, but the majority of us gonna have our prodigal son moment when we fall away from our first love. That's why I say the term unbelief. Because everybody's born with the knowledge of God embedded in their DNA, embedded in their soul. It's just the world and the things thereof and sin nature that's in us tricked us and fools us. So that's why the whole process of being born again. It's important. You know what I'm saying? And that's what happens when a lot of times riches increase. You turn away from your first love. You turn away from how you was when you started. And that's one of my biggest fears. I'm telling y'all, most people ain't going to tell you that. But it is. Because right now, I'm staying in the house, you know. And I got a, a lot of stuff. Not a real lot, but a lot. Because I'm like, I was just looking at it, what else I need for the house? And I keep sitting there and thinking, yeah, I might need a new couch or new certain things like that. But I'm like, what else do I really truly need? There are some things I want, but what do I really truly need? I got a refrigerator, stove, wash and dry them, food, enough. You know understand? And I look, I'm like, what do I need to buy? My wife asked me the other day, what do you want for your birthday? I said, nothing. I said, uh, I'm okay. But you know, I've never said that in my whole life. What you want for your birthday? Even I drink, I could have said, buy me a bar of liquor. I didn't even say that. I said, I'm okay. And she looked at me like, what? Yeah. I'm, I'm straight with what I got. I'm not saying I'm, I got a super abundance overflow. I, I kind of live paycheck to paycheck with a little money over. I'm not overflowing in my bank account. You understand? And that's what I thought when I first became a Christian. That's what it was going to be about. Oh, I'm a Christian now. I'm finna get rich. Uh, I found out real quick. That's not how it worked. You know, he broke me down. You know, I done moved around since I became a Christian from so many different places, house to house. You know, I got the military, I got married, you know, I went through a divorce, went to this place, stayed with this person, stayed with this person. I went from place to place. And I done lost so much material stuff because every time I leave a house, I leave with most of the time my clothes on my back and my Bibles and a few things that God wants me to keep with me. But I done learned to be content with, even if I lose this house I'm in, that the bare minimum is better sometimes you understand yes i want a nice house but i don't want no super big house you know what i'm saying i'm telling you man you can get real prideful and boastful when riches increase you start buying stuff you don't need you got eight blenders in the house and then somebody come out you might use one of your blenders i don't know about that <laughs> you understand what i'm saying like even with all the bibles i got you know what I'm saying? If somebody asked me for a Bible, I should have give them one. You know what I'm saying? So I think with increase, increase how you bless folks. Increase looking out for other people. Because I'm telling you, man, think about this now. Let's say your dream, your desires, and your heart is to have a four-bedroom house with a pool, 2,600 square foot. That's not, that's like a bare minimum for the South. A nice-sized house, pool. You got everything you need in your house. But you're still increasing. Everything's paid for. Everything is not what you're going to do. You're going to keep buying more. 
you're gonna be like, well, I'm tired of that tape, I'm buying another tape. You know, you see, see what I'm saying? You go in people houses from back in the day, they didn't have the same furniture for 20 years. That's this day and age. We want something new every year. And it's kind of crazy. Every year we want something new. I'm learning. Once you get to that point, you got enough help more people. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying to learn this now. I ain't gonna lie to you now. God increase my mind. It's certain clothes I want to get. Because <laughs> let's put it like this. If God ever blessed the fruit of my hands to the point where I don't have to work for somebody else and I can be myself and I have to go by these certain rules and regulations or look a certain way and dress a certain way because everybody say they don't do it but you know you have to you work for UPS you got to carry yourself a certain way but it's a certain style that I have that I want to utilize and I understand why a lot of stars and a lot of people who get money they start buying the clothes they wanted and that's cool you know what I'm saying but don't let them clothes fool you you still the same person you was before you put that Louis Vuitton shirt on you understand you still the same person just because you got a little money that don't mean you no different from nobody else that's one thing we got to realize we are no different from the poor the poor and the rich are not different you understand we just some people got this long end of the stick and some people got the short end of the stick you know what I'm saying you shouldn't knock nobody you understand for real we do it all the time we do it you know like I kind of try to use racist judgment sometimes because I see some people begging, you know, and it's like they, it's their job. It's their job. I just seen people beg on the same corner for hours and hours of the day. And then it's like, uh, uh, it's, think about what a nine to five is. It's a job. But you, if you can sit at a corner store, but I'm not saying that they didn't ask me for help, I want help. But you start seeing things from a different light. But there are poor people that will take advantage of rich or people with money too. I'm just being real with you people. I'm not saying that because people are, are less in stature as far as money that they automatically good. By no means people. I done met some people who are less on the financial scale and are horrible people. But I done met people who have finances and are good people. It's, it's always different with everyone. You understand? But what I'm saying is people just don't get proud for when things increase up for you. Think about being content with what you have. Let's say you got everything in your house. Now you can have, what about focus on buying that, that lobster that you wanted to cook? The stuff you couldn't cook. You can buy them good meals. You know, like think in regards to food, like which you can cook better things. You ain't got to buy macaroni and cheese every day. You understand, if you had to buy macaroni and cheese every day, cool. But focus on things that like that you understand important things so if people do come to your house and they have need of food you ain't got to send them to the grocery store you just go into your care cupboard and grab them some ramen noodles some canned goods some sugar or whatever you got you understand because god didn't bless you like that you got some extra clothes your clothes is about to bust out right now give some of that clothes away i'm gonna when i lose a little weight i'm gonna wear this again if God been blessing you right now, guess what? He gonna make sure you got the you got some clothes on. He gonna make sure you got some clothes that fit you. You understand? Start giving some of that stuff away. I ain't talking about no yard sale. I'm talking about give some stuff away, people. I'm telling y'all this because, like I said, I'm scared to reach that echelon sometimes. You say perfect little cast out fear. But you know, at the same time, a little fear is a little good. Fear of the Lord is the beginning of understanding. So you should fear your weaknesses. You know, that's like, let's say you're a person that loves to talk to women. Why send yourself out there with somewhere where a bunch of women going to be and you're married? You know, it's called self-control. You got to utilize those things as you grow as a Christian. And like I said, many people in the Bible have fell short because when they increased, their faith decreased. Their fear of the Lord decreased. You understand? You want the Lord to keep you humble in a humble state. You understand? And I'm telling you, look at the world we live in now. The Bible even tells you many rich people are going to be in hell. But he said it's possible to be rich and still make it to heaven through Christ. You understand? Many rich people are going to, and think about it, poor people are going to be there too. You understand? 
But think about it. I'm talking about like far as the favor of the Lord. As the Lord shows you more favor, you start being more and more obedient to him. Your funds going to increase. I'm telling you, it's coming. Am I saying you're going to be rich? You're going to have your $300,000 in the bank. You might be a thousand now. You might, <laughs> you know, don't even hope for that. If it happened, happen. You understand? Don't set your mind on riches. If your riches increase, they just increase. Don't be like, I got to get a thousand now. Like, I play this pool game on my phone. And I'm telling you something stupid we do. I don't like to gamble. But at the same time, I got this pool game on my phone. And like, I got like 565,000 now. And that's a lot. And you know what I'm saying? So, but don't tell you what we do though. Now, as you move up the stature, you got $565,000 in coins to play pool. Now they got different leads. So you got to pay $20,000 to play this pool game. You gotta pay 40,000. Now you may have 565,000, but let's say you start playing those $100,000 game. That's $50,000 per person or coins. Now you put more in and you got a chance to lose more. Do you understand what I'm saying? You don't have to spend more just because you got more. But you know, all the time it's a game and they just, but at the same time, I think about that when I'm playing the game, I'm like, why I got to, because I'm making 500000 I mean, I done made it to 500000 Why I want to play the $50,000 pot now? But I can just stay playing the 2500 or the five hundred, and, and still have money in the bank. Think about that in regards to clothing and everything else in your life. All right, you make $2,000 a week now. Now you feel you can go buy a $400 pair of shoes. All right. Then after that, you feel you can buy a $300 shirt. Then after that, you feel you can buy a $200 hat. Then you feel you can buy a chain. And then you like, now you're still back to the square one again. You're back to the same place that God has delivered you from through your own lust and your own deceitfulness. Because you're thinking that instead of Walmart now, I can go to Louis Vuitton or I can go to Polo. So think about it. every time your pay increases, your budget shouldn't increase does that make sense you shouldn't have to be like well i'm gonna go i know every once in a while you want to go buy yourself something nice but be smart now you read you watch hollywood stories and stuff like that how stars spurs a lot of money thought they had a lot of money i'm just reading about uh nicholas cage he said he had to do it, start doing a lot of low budget films because he went and bought a lot of unreal real estate a bunch of real estate to try to, you know, keep money going, but it didn't flip right. But you just spent, let's say you got a million or you got $20 million and you buy a bunch of million dollar houses and none of them sell. Now you just lost money. You just sitting there. Why, why? You understand, I'm just being real people. We, but you got these advisors and people around you that's telling you what to do and what to do. That's why you got God. You call on the Lord. He said, even in Solomon and all his glory was not arrayed like a flower. He wasn't flashy. You understand? He wasn't like, just spending his money wastefully. Probably on some of those wicked wives he had. But you have to pay attention to things like that as you walk as a Christian. When you increase, man, I'm going to stay cheap. And I'm not saying cheap like that. It's certain things I like that don't cost a lot. You know, to me, a name brand shouldn't make you. You understand? Think about a purse that people, women just crowd stuff in there, makeup and everything. $500 just to throw on a seat. Just to not even see all the time. Just to sit there. I, I know a lot of y'all men, like, I want my wife to have the nicest things. Well, maybe your wife is just lives, living in lasciviousness. And you trying to make sure she got the highest class price stuff and the best things. It's breaking your bank account. And you wonder why you're so stressed. I'm just being real, people. Invest in things that, and I'm like, so I'm not even an investor yet. I'm just telling y'all these things, man. God's just telling me stuff off the dome right now. But pride, man, and stature, it destroy a lot of us. You know, for real. You ain't got to live fancy. You know, um, 
I met a dude we moved to do not too long ago. He used to own, he owned a, a nursery. Uh, he had cattle. The house was not probably about a four bedroom house, but he was a millionaire. Living in a four bedroom house with just enough. Now he had a lot of furniture because when you got a woman around, you know that women gonna bring more stuff. <laughs> But he had a lot of excess stuff. He had a lot of tools. And I've been looking at that, you know, but you accumulate stuff over the years, but he never tried to get a bigger house. Ain't that amazing? You understand? Because how much stuff can you actually pay attention to in your life? How much stuff do you actually really need in your house? Just to say you got it. That's all I want to tell y'all today, man. Don't be prideful. If you haven't lower your standards, because that's the world telling you, Bye, bye, bye. God is kind of telling you, save, save, save. Not just for yourself, for those in need. How can you save, save, save if you spend, spend, spend? Right? Does that make sense? That's why I'm like, man, I got a feeling somebody's finna prosper. Hopefully it's me. But at the same time, some part of me like, hopefully not me. Cause I'm scared, you know what I'm saying? I make music and what if all it takes is one of one of the songs I make to just prosper and now I don't now I gotta have to worry about a whole nother can of worms. What they say, the more money, the more problems. Oh Lord Jesus, that, that fears me right there. And it should fear you a little bit. You put a little fear in your heart too. You know what I'm saying? If you think thinking money gonna solve your problems, you better you got another thing coming. You might as well just get ready to be the giver. Or be stingy, and then that's even worse. You see what so much stuff you got to worry about when you, when riches increase, so much stuff. But if you ain't giving your life to Jesus, man, just keep your eye on the prize because I'm telling you, when riches increase, you got a, a high probability of falling off your high horse and becoming a bad person. You understand? Just losing your first love, losing the things that's important. Have a blessed day.